And here I thought we were live. You know, we so. are now. <laughs> All this time. Well, welcome to Garden Chatter, where we bring gardeners and uh, garden experts and bloggers together where we can all grow and learn. We have some great guests tonight, and um, my co-host, Bran, will introduce them in just a moment. So we're super excited to be here. We were having a, a little bit of technical difficulties, but everybody's on board, so we're going to get started. So first off, welcome. Bren, who do we have today? Oh my gosh, Adam, I'm so excited. We've got some really cool garden gurus here. We've got Kathy. Um, boy, I really should let them introduce themselves. Yeah, Linda, because I'm going to end up calling her Garden Betty, because we all know her as that from Twitter. And Scott, Scott, like, totally cracks me up with his awesome veggie shares at Gotta Grow It on Twitter. So I'll let you guys tell us what uh, hardiness zone are you growing in? I'm going to start with Kathy, maybe? Hey, I am Washington, D.C., Maryland border, and that's Mid Atlantic Zones. Seven areas. I'm school seven myself. Very good. You froze up just for a second, Kathy. What zone were you in again? Um, zone seven. Okay. I guess it's a cold zone. She froze yes. right up there. You yeah. Know? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what about um, Linda? Where are you located? You're down in California. Near LA, right, Linda? I am in coastal LA, which is zone 10B. Um, and so I get to garden year round. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I was seeing the uh, news. It looks like a cold front. This uh, this cold air is dropping down even into LA. So I don't know. I don't know how close that'll get to where you are, but it's going to get pretty cold. We have a freeze warning tonight and tomorrow. <laughs> Imagine that, huh? Wow. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm Scott, and I live in uh, Merrimack, New Hampshire, and I'm in Zone 5A. Uh, tonight tonight's low is going to be about 15, so you know, wow. it'll be, it'll be a little cool. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, Linda, do you have to rush around and try to cover up stuff because you're not you know you're not really used to having a, a freeze like that? So, is it kind of panic mode a little bit for you, or is everything oh. all set? Everything is all set, and it's only for a night or two, so hopefully it won't be too bad. We have rain, which, you know, this month has been the most rain that we've had in three years, so it's a joyous occasion. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, you guys were drying up down there. So why don't we um, just go through again, and um, Kathy, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're up to and maybe uh, where we could find you online, and we'll just go through that, and then we can hear some garden successes and and any failures, and what's been going on in your, your gardens this year. All right. Well, on Twitter, I'm at WDC Gardener. You can find me that same handle on Google Plus and Instagram. You can find me under my name on LinkedIn and Ooh. Facebook and Washington Gardener Magazine as well. And my biggest project currently is getting together our two upcoming seed exchanges, and those happen at the end of January and the beginning of February. And those are live in-person seed exchanges, so always a lot of fun. That does sound like fun. And Linda, what are you? Uh, you have a your garden blog, and um, what are you up to down there, as far as your blogging and what else? What's going on? <laughs> well, my blog is gardenbetty.com, um, and I've been blogging there for four years. On Twitter, I am the Garden Betty. And right now, um, the biggest project that I have going on is a cookbook called the CSA Cookbook. It's forthcoming um, in the spring. February 16 is the release date. And it's a cookbook that um, teaches people how to use all of the different parts of the vegetables that they have. So we're so accustomed to tossing carrot greens, radish greens. We might not know that something like tomato leaves and pepper leaves are actually edible. So my cookbook gives recipes for all of these unconventional parts, as well as things that you um, might get in a CSA box that you're not familiar with, or things that you grow day to day. That sounds great. Okay. So, yeah. Exciting. Adam, can I take a minute to remind people that if you're watching us live, you can click on the little grid on the right-hand side, upper 
part of the Google screen and hit the Q&A right there. You can ask a question to one of our guests today or you can also, we'd love to hear from you, just say hi so we can connect with you here on Google. And so Scott, tell us what's going on. Yeah, so uh, I've been putting a lot of time uh, these days. You know, I'm, I'm really new to this whole social media thing. I'm not new to gardening, though. I've been around for, for a little while doing the gardening thing. And uh, so I'm really trying to get my head around all the uh, social media stuff and, and think I'm progressing okay, uh, spending a lot of time on figuring out Twitter and things like that. In fact, Brent, you've been a great help uh, with some of that as well. So I, I really appreciate the uh, connection that we've had uh, on, uh, online. And, and this is great to be in this forum, even talking with, with all of you. I, I feel like I know you all and seeing you. I see you guys on Twitter and stuff like that all the time anyway. So this is just really neat. Um, right now, I'm in a mild depression just because, well, I, I can't grow anything. Uh, I've got grow lights in the house, though, so I may play around with just some herbs just to get something going. And, um, you know, spring around here happens in kind of mid, mid to late March, I guess, really, is when we start feeling like it's spring. So that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Fantastic. So I was just noticing your backdrop there, um, and I'm, ah, I'm yes. having a little bit of a... Envy, and I think I might be inspired to, to create something a little bit more um, interesting than what I have here. My, that is, uh, little, that is brand new. I just got that last week, and uh, uh, my daughter's uh, fiance actually is a very talented uh, man, and uh, he made it for me. It's really good. It, it captures my exact logo, and it's, it's just really neat. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. That makes it great. Because you've been doing some uh, YouTube videos with that as your yes. backdrop, right? So, yes, yes, yeah, exactly. That's a great yeah. way to do it. Very good. Well, um, I was wondering, maybe we could go around and just tell a little bit of, I don't know, how about we'd have some successes. What was um, exciting in the garden and uh, got us really jazzed up this last year? And then maybe we can follow that up with some, some troubles we had and uh, think about next year. So, um, hey, Bren, what about you? What, what were you all jazzed up about this year? Oh, boy. 2014. <laughs> I'm pretty... It may seem simple to a lot of you, but I was just really excited. I actually grew some corn, and I got a harvest. <laughs> it was popping corn, and it was only a little, but still it worked after six or seven years of failing. Um, so that was really cool. <laughs> I know, boring, right? <laughs> yeah, no, but it seems like everybody has like their little thing that for some reason in that area or that soil, it just yeah. is a struggle. Or And yeah. um, it's funny because my, my big success was growing cucumbers. I mean, really, cucumbers. But the year oh, before, right. I had this huge <laughs> um, cucumber beetle infestation, and okay. they all got uh, the... the um, bacterial wilt and died and so this year I had I made this uh, trellis on a 4 by 8 raised bed and I ended up with more cucumbers than I could deal with and I grew you know I planted some from seed and I was so excited that I didn't want to like you know I planted too many really and I had these Armenian like uh, big, you know those big green ones and uh, so I ended up with armfuls of cucumbers so that was a lot of wow. fun. Wow! Mm. Did you save any of the seeds? Well you know actually I didn't um, no, I did not save any of the seeds. But, oh, well. Yeah. Next year. <laughs> I know. I need to get better at my seed saving. <laughs> maybe, about, Kathy, maybe Kathy can help us with that with her seed swap coming up. <laughs> there we go. So, Kathy, what were you, um, what was a great thing that happened in your garden this last year? Um, I think one of the things I'm most excited about is, and hopefully you guys can see this on the camera, are these little terrarium ornaments that I learned how to make. Let's see if I hold it up here. Yeah, we can see it if you hold see it up it. a little higher there. Yeah. There we go. So basically, I'm showing you the, the moss forest one, but there's also desert landscape ones where you do succulents. Mm -hmm. And these are just in little plastic Christmas ornaments, and they just made the best gift this year. Simple and easy, and actually getting them to grow. I've had this one going since October. So you have to start them pretty far in advance, I suppose, to get them. Well, so you have to I, shove everything through the hole, right? <laughs> correct. Yeah, that's the trick. I'll, I'll show you that one thing. I'll take off this. There's the stem. And, yeah, it's only about, what, a half inch wide hole on the top? So the best thing I found to use are the bamboo skewers that you get, you know, for your, you know, instead of soaking with water and using them on your bamboo 
for your, for a barbecue is just to use those because usually most of our fingers don't fit in there <laughs> very well. No. Long tweezers <laughs> also work, and I've also used Q-tips just to clean up a little bit. But I think even giving them freshly made, just with a couple couple of succulents in there, also works well. I mean, as long as people aren't thinking that they're going to last forever. Although I've heard a couple of people said they've got them to live at least two years, which is amazing, I think. So basically just a mini terrarium. Hmm. And my, my problem is remembering I take a little water dropper that I use, you know, you get a little tiny syringe um, from the cat's medicine cabinet and drop in about a half dropper every week because otherwise they will dry out fairly quickly. So do you maybe you could hang those on like a off of a window or above a window, kind of hanging down, so they get some light, or where you end up I putting think, them? Actually, I put them away from direct sunlight, just because going through the double panes of glass, I think it's just too intense. And what's inside are moss and coleus, so indirect light seems to be best, even with the succulents. I also, I also think with the sun directly on them, it, t it tends to condense the moisture on the side, and that's when you get like the streaky moisture coming down the the edges of the glass. What a fun idea! That's that sounds yeah. like it'd be great. I'm have to keep that in mind for next year. Well, Linda, what have you been up to this last year in your garden? I know you've I've been following your blog, and it's always fun. So, yeah. what have you been excited about? Um, well, I'm an edible gardener, so most of um, my property is devoted to growing vegetables. I grow in raised beds, and it seems like every year I'm always adding a new bed or two somewhere I find the space. Um, so over here, it can get pretty expensive to buy new soil to fill a pretty deep bed. So I discovered um, no-dig gardening which is building, it's, like, it's a form of lasagna gardening. So you build um, layers of newspaper, blood meal, bone meal, straw, and alfalfa hay. Um, and then you can plant directly into that material. And as it breaks down through the season, it feeds the plants that you're growing. Um, and I had a great success with that. So I've done like very shallow root vegetables, like turnips and radishes in that bed. Um, as well as a bunch of different leafy greens, and they were just so full and so lush, like some of the best crops that I had this past season. Um, and then I also used that same method to revive an old bed that was just sort of dry and crackled and had been neglected, um, just doing like the same layers on top of that, and those plants did very well also. I'm all for no-dig vegetable gardening. I didn't have to haul around big bags of soil around the garden. Yeah, That's <laughs> yeah, that cool. sounds, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I've been considering trying to do some things like that with my beds instead of, you know, turning the soil as much, just trying to layer it up. And yes, and just add right way. on top. Very good. But you, Scott, what's going on? Well, I, you know, I get excited about anything that grows in the garden, except except for the weeds, of course. But uh, which which have a tendency to do really well. But uh, I, I got to tell you, you know, I, I actually brought some props here, you know, just to show you because I knew you were going to ask questions like this. I mean, I get excited about like my tomatoes, you know, my peaches. We're, we're still eating peaches, you know. I've got, uh, I still got a bunch of green beans left, and I'm pretty excited about that. But what I was really excited about this year, where am I, and I've been talking about this a lot on my social media stuff, where these, um, I actually got this stuff in a baggie. I, I, I have some of this, I have most of the, most of the um, scorpion pepper flakes are in a, in a sprinkled jar, I guess that's what you'd call it. But I had some leftover stuff, so I stuck it in a baggie. And, and, and pl please don't judge me on this when I tell you this, but back in the 70s, I got caught carrying a baggie like this, but it wasn't <laughs> that color. And, but anyway, that was a flashback. I, I, I got to tell you, I, I had a local farmer guy that told me about these scorpion peppers. I just I had this conversation with him and told him I like hot peppers, and he said, you got to put one of these in, in your garden and let's see what happens. It was one plant. The thing produced about maybe 70 or 80 uh, peppers, and I'm telling you, these things, they were exciting to watch them grow. Nothing would touch it. I mean, the bugs wouldn't go near it. Disease wouldn't touch it. 
In fact, I think if I went out there and pulled away some snow, it's probably still going. I don't know. These things are, are great. So I was pretty excited about that. Um, a failure that I've had, and, and I've struggled, you know, uh, similar to you, Adam, you know, with, with uh, sometimes the cucumbers or zucchini or summer squash. This year, the uh, uh, cucumbers really went well, and I had the same problem with that cucumber beetle. But my, my summer squash, I just, I don't know what happened. And I had them all in the same area. The zucchini did pretty well. Cucumbers did well. But that summer squash just struggled, and uh, it, it was a disappointment. What, what seemed to be the problem with it? Was it an insect problem, or just they weren't producing uh, anything? No, I, mean, uh, I mean, I was, in fact, or? I had, uh, on one bed, I had a 4 by 8 bed on, on one of my beds, and I had zucchini and the summer squash growing pretty much side by side. And zucchini was so prolific, it just took off. I don't know if it was just a bad spot right there. Um, I really felt like I had good control over this Ooh. nemesis that I have when it comes to the uh, squashes, you know, the... Uh, the squash bug. Are you guys familiar with that thing? Mm -hmm. Squash yes. bug? Ah, uh, yes. I, I have nightmares of these things. I mean, they, they hate these things. <laughs> and, uh, but, and, and I had pretty good control over them this year. I never get rid of them ultimately, but I had pretty good control over them this year. But um, I, I don't know what it was. I had, I had a lot of uh, male flowers. I didn't have a lot of female flowers on the uh, summer squash. It just didn't really ever mm. develop well. Um, so... Uh, well, sounds like uh, yeah, typical <laughs> year. Some things thrive. Yeah, and some, you know, yeah. Like, no, oh, all oh, that the peppers were awesome. I got to tell I you. I know all that canning you're showing is making me really hungry. <laughs> oh, oh wait a minute, wait a minute. I just I just realized I still have some of these in my in my garage because it's like it's 42 degrees in there. So that's uh, that's uh, butternut squash. For those that are in California, that's part of not winter squash is what we call it. Hey, we have those too. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Didn't mean to insult the people in California. Didn't know that. We talked earlier. Okay. Oh, yeah, I bet. I bet they do come out much earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see, Linda, did you have any um, difficulties or things that just didn't go as well as you wanted or I did. I actually had the same problems that... Um, you guys have mentioned I had a big problem with, well, for one, I had a big problem with flea beetles, which nearly decimated my tomatillo plants. Um, but also, I had a pretty vicious case of wilt in the garden um, that was just stunting a lot of my peppers and tomatoes. No matter what I tried, it just, like, nothing was really helping. So they were kind of, they were struggling definitely this summer. Um, and I ended up <clears throat> having a trip where I was going away for the entire month of September, which is also, for us, our Indian summer, the hottest weather that we get all year. Mm -hmm. And so my husband and I um, ripped everything up in the raised beds, and we decided to do a full um, solarization of the soil, where you lay plastic over the ground, and you just let... Over a few weeks, you let the power of the sun just bake everything that's underneath it. Um, so that kills any kind of soil-borne diseases that you have, like um, wilt or blight, and also it kills the larvae of different pests like flea beetles. So when you remove the covers a few weeks later, it's like having fresh, brand-new, sterilized soil. Okay. So we're very excited to actually start planting in that right now. And hopefully have a better summer. <laughs> That's really cool. Do you share that on your blog? Is that a post on your blog? It is. It's called Soil Solarization. Okay. Awesome. So you can do it for raised beds, and you can also do it um, just if you plant directly in the ground. It's a method that farmers do in the fields a lot of times um, when they're not able to rotate their crops as much. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I just did everything all at once. Very cool. <laughs> Sounds like a good good way to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking, I'm just wondering a little bit, did you read up on anything, Linda, about just the soil biology, the, the good um, nematodes and bacteria and fungi in there? Does that kind of kill all them too and you have to start fresh building up the soil biology or are you, do they kind of take cover? I don't know really the... It actually improves the soil, and so I had concerns about that too, that you might kill like the earthworms and all of the good um, the microbials that are in there, but they actually 
they because the soil is free of a lot of those nematodes and pests, um, the good bacteria actually starts proliferating again at a faster rate um, soon after you remove the covers. And so during the time that you're solarizing, they can actually withstand quite a bit of heat. So I think unless you're in an, envir like in an area that is very, very, very hot where it's routinely, say, 110 degrees or more for weeks, um, you're not likely to kill the good bacteria that's in your soil. And as far as earthworms and other things that live in there, they just burrow deeper because you do wet the soil down um, very heavily before you cover everything. So they just go to where it's cooler and moist. All right. Well, fantastic. Yeah, I guess, uh, you know, when you do a hot compost, it gets up to 160 or 165 potentially. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, they, can, mm -hmm. they can handle that. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to do a quick um, shout out to, we have Joe Golden and uh, Kim on. And if anyone else wants to leave a question or comment, go ahead and, like Bren said earlier, look on the top right of your um, screen on the Google um, or the video hangout. And mm -hmm. then you can uh, click the little Q&A and then leave a question or comment. He said squash bugs or squash vine borers. Was it, we were talking about squash bugs, right? Uh, right. right. Scott? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any experience with, Really, the squash vine borers. I know they're. A oh, big you're lucky. Problem. I know. I know. I know. I'm lucky on that. I've had plenty of experience yeah. with the squash beetles, but not the, yeah. the borers. So, thankfully. Hmm. Well, what about Kathy? How? Are, <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Versace is peeping in the background. Uh, <laughs> he just comes in, meows, walks away. Comes in, meows, walks away. <laughs> I know. We have to. Wait, what is the website you have? You share some really cute cats. Uh, yeah, cats. <laughs> it's Cats and Gardens. It's a blog. So it's catsandgardens.blogspot.com. Awesome. So every Saturday, a.k.a. Saturday, uh -huh. <laughs> I, I post a new cat in a garden, and it could be anything from a garden center kitty to somebody straight alley cat that comes visiting their community allotment, or it can be a garden statue. I've had some nice garden art, and I welcome yeah. submissions from anybody. So, okay. oh, oh, I will definitely be submitting some. I have a <laughs> neighbor's cat that has really earned its keep in, in the garden. I oh, worked that. this thing out. But every day, every morning, this cat, un, 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 at least until the ground's frozen, he looks in my garden and goes, wow, there's 45, you know, cat boxes that are all well groomed for him. And I'm sure it's a different one every day. And uh, I just have to remember what he's done in the summer. And in the summer, he's, he's, he's learned his right to crap in my garden. Let's put it that way. Okay. I will send you will get a picture this oh, by the end of the week I promise you. <laughs> you know that's really strange cuz I don't have that problem and I have yeah. six cats. I think we just have enough space. Really? Yeah. yeah. Are they like a looks at me. He looks at me <laughs> yeah. through, through the window and he laughs. <laughs> so I'm telling you. I'm serious. He's like ha, ha, crapping in your garden again. <laughs> serious. My neighbor's cat does that to me. <laughs> yeah. Really? No. And so, yeah, at our community garden, we have about 40 garden plots, and a feral cat colony lives next door in one of the um, car service garages. Okay. And the cats do not use the gardens as their litter box. It's always amazing. I don't know where they're going. Okay. But That's it's not in the, garden, it's not in the gardens. Going. Yeah, they're, they're going all the way up to Scott. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're shipping it north. Yeah. Scott, I think they're picking up a negative with you or something, maybe. <laughs> Grow some catnip over in yes. another area. Oh, you know what? That's a good idea. Yeah. How about in my neighbor's yard, the, the neighbor that owns the cat? I'll Except, just add that. Extend the olive branch. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, he likes the yard because there are a lot of chipmunks, and that's what mm -hmm. he's hunting all summer long, so I don't have to worry about him. You know, he just, about every three days, I see him dragging one out of there, so he... Uh, <laughs> He's, he's earned his keep. Well, you know what, Scott? I think he's actually gifting you with some fresh compost. <laughs> he doesn't understand that, the That's concept. what happened to the summer yes. squash. I'll tell you exactly. what. Bad compost. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure about that. that. <laughs> Probably not the direction you all wanted to go in, right? Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm <laughs> well, it is a pretty serious topic. I mean, yes. it is a problem. 
And I do hear yeah, I occasionally do. on the Cats and Gardens blog, it's usually people who don't want a cat in their garden because of bird. They're a bird fan. But sure. occasionally because it's a neighbor's cat who's decided that their garden is their litter box. And, you know, a few of the home remedies that I've read, I find totally ineffective. Like the orange peels and orange spray. Uh, personally, my cats like orange cleaner smell. So I don't know about your cats, Brenda. Fire hose, that might do yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was actually going to say there is a neat little yeah. um, uh, sprayer, like a sensor thing for deer. Mm -hmm. And you could also do that for cats, you know. Yeah, the, sca the scarecrow. I always ended up getting sprayed in my own garden. I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes, sometimes all it takes is uh, the sound. Like, that's what I used to do to one of my neighbor's cats yeah. who would pick fights with another cat, was mm -hmm. to make the little tsst. Like, the, <laughs> the, just even the gesture of a trigger spray of, like, a Formula 409 bottle. And there that cat go. took off. <laughs> that <laughs> cat knew. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, maybe, um, Kathy, did you want to share anything that um, was a difficult problem in your garden? Or we could yeah, move I on think, to think about next um, year. Yeah, As far as my edible garden, the... Only failure I can think of this year that was a surprise to me was kale getting white fly infestation. And that had never happened to me before. I always had trouble free kale, never had anything issues with it. And I don't know if it, they came with the seedlings um, when I transplanted them out to the garden, or this was the year that the white fly just found my kale. Yeah. Yeah, I have huge problems with white flies. Um, a lot of times when I try to do my fall garden, um, Sometime around September, October, it's not freezing yet at night, and those white flies just kind of go nuts. So, I, I was trying uh, this year. I was trying um, some cover crops in between, trying to get some, uh, some beneficial insects there, and maybe that helped. I don't know. My plants survived and are still doing okay. So, I don't know. But. Have um have cover crops been around for a while? I mean, like it just seems like lately I'm hearing more about that from the home gardener, is it just me or is that new to you guys you're too? You're talking right? like, like winter like winter rye and things like that mm -hmm. that, that you sow? You're talking yeah. about that? Yeah. Like that? yeah. Well, I think they've been around, you know, for yeah. Yeah. Know, years and years and years, yeah. but I think maybe there's a bit of an upsurgence and just awareness and people trying yeah. to get uh, their soil health built up with cover crops. So. I think okay. that we're also just taking more from um, standard agricultural practices you know, so people are using more cover crops, trying soil solarization, mm -hmm. um, and things like the Florida weed for tomatoes. So we just sort of bring those solutions that are out in like a bigger field and putting that into a home garden, and it works. Mm -hmm. I like, yeah, it's definitely something I want to try this year. Totally, yeah. Hmm. Well, I was just going to do a quick shout out to. Um, Let's see, we have Samantha Sherling is on. She says she needs some advice on roses. And Samantha, maybe you could be a little more specific. I'm not sure. I know, well, Bren, you are you grow roses, so maybe you can help her out. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure what she needs I'm in not, particular. I'm not the rose expert, but <laughs> <laughs> I've actually, I've been doing pretty well. I started out with some landscape roses, your typical knockout roses. And knock on wood, I haven't had any issues with them at all. And um, I just built my confidence starting with those easy growers. And now I even grow some really pretty English uh, David Austin roses and whatnot I'm pretty excited about. Um, let's see, I think, Scott, you're all vegetables, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm um, eating it all. Okay. Linda, do you have any roses? I can't remember. I do not. I grow fruits, vegetables, and okay. Beneficial flowers. Okay, Kathy? Yeah, actually, I do okay. several different kinds of roses. However, um, we have that horrible summer humidity. So the roses look beautiful through maybe June 15th, and then the rest of the year they look like, you know, something that you wouldn't want to bury in the backyard. But, <laughs> <laughs> but for April yeah. and May and half of June, they're gorgeous. Uh, right. And I've tried every resistant variety there is, so I'm wondering where Samantha is gardening and trying out roses, um, so that might be some of the impact on her if, if she has black spot or other issues. 
Right. Yeah. Maybe she could um, go ahead, Samantha, if you're if you're listening, and, and mm -hmm. put in a specific qu question. Maybe we can help you out with that. And then Joe Golden had um, he had asked uh, Linda, if your soil has improved, why did your solanaceous crops get wilt? Now I was thinking, Linda, you you were doing the solarizing because you had the wilt and the problems. Is that right? And you don't know right. for sure the effect it has yet because you're going to be, you know, growing from here on now. Is that right? Yeah. In it. Yeah, so I had the wilt first, then I decided to improve the soil through solarization, and, and we'll see as the year goes on. Yeah, very good. Well, Bren, what about, should we wrap it up in the, in the next you know, few minutes by um, going around and just sharing something we're all jazzed up about for the next year? And then, that sounds uh, great. Boy, it's like the hour flew. We're having so much fun yeah. here. Yeah. So fun <laughs> maybe, we could, maybe we could do like how we open. We'll start with Kathy, then Linda, then Scott. Cool. Oh, well, I have been reading about the tomatoes grafted onto potato roots. So hmm. I'm really excited wow. to be getting some samples of those and being able to try that out. I feel like both of those plants are such heavy feeders that I'm wondering... Um, how much extra organic fertilizer or fish fertilizer or um, as best soil as I can put them in is what I'm going to use. Well, that sounds like an exciting thing to try out. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, will you, I hope you'll be sharing it on your blog, I'm guessing, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah definitely. And any photos and any harvest I get from those. Of course, I always forget to dig up the tomatoes, I mean the potatoes at the end of the season. <laughs> That's one That's of okay. my... <laughs> so you, you actually, you have a couple of different blogs. You're with the Washington, D.C. Gardener. Um, can you tell us where, where can we find you the best, like your own website? Yeah, so WashingtonGardener.com is the overall website, and okay. WashingtonGardener.blogspot.com is where I blog at. And every Friday during the growing season, for edibles, which is pretty much March through November for us. Every Friday I do a report from our community garden plot, so you can catch up on the edible gardening there. Awesome. Thank you. So Linda, do you want to go ahead next? And what's your big excitement for the next year, for 2015? Um, well, 2015 is the year that I'm very much focusing on soil biology. Um, so I'm experimenting with compost tea brewing. Um, normally what I have done this past year is making compost tea out of my own kitchen scrap compost and my worm compost, and that goes well. You know, there's sort of every batch that we brew is slightly different. Like, do we add molasses to this, or do we add, you know, something else to that? Um, but I've recently been working with Boogie Brew, and they do an entire line of compost tea, like different rock dust and salts and um, different kinds of castings from worms and beetles. And so they've got it figured out. Um, so I'm going to be experimenting with the ready-made compost tea bags that they have and just testing it on various parts of the garden, you know, where on my fruit trees as well as my perennials as well as my annual vegetables. Um, and seeing how it goes. So Hi. that's what I'm very excited about. <laughs> Sounds good. Actually, I'm really excited about doing some compost. Have you have you been doing it as a like a drench or a foliar spray or? Both. We do both. So we do mostly a drench, um, and then as the main application, and then every few weeks we'll do a foliar spray. But we just got drip irrigation put into the garden, and our Thinking about running compost tea through the drip system, you know, seeing how that works out. Hmm. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about yeah. that avenue. Um, yeah. Just have to make sure it's filtered, I guess, and then. Well, yeah, it just has to be yeah. very clear. Mm -hmm. How about you, Scott? What's, All right. Uh, well, I, I'm thinking, you know, scorpion peppers. That's what I'm. Well, anyway, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have enough. I have enough scorpion pepper stuff. I think to last another five years, you know. But I'm gonna grow. I'm actually gonna grow a bunch more because so many people seem to be interested in them. And uh, I think I'm gonna do some different uh, giveaways throughout the year. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna package some of the. Um, some of the seeds and uh, just encourage more people to go ahead and grow scorpion peppers. But but the thing I'm really excited about trying this year, and I've never grown, it's strange that I've never done this, but I've never grown 
parsnips before. I don't even know what they taste like, but I love the word parsnip. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to grow some parsnips this year. So I'm excited about that. We'll have to, uh, I'll have to blog on it, I guess, show a bunch of pictures. Hopefully I won't be showing a picture when I bite into it and it's awful and I spit it out, but no. although no, no. if I spit Please it out, do. I'm going to show the picture. I'll show it. But, uh, uh, that's the picture I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and the other thing, too, if, if, if you've been following anything that I've been tweeting about or whatever, Facebook, I've been bartering. This year I did a lot of bartering for, like, eggs, and I got, a, I got an organic turkey for uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think – and I already grow, like – I do, like, 90-plus tomato plants a year, and I can maybe 100 and – quarts of uh, sauce, you know, tomatoes and stuff. I think I'm going to increase that a little bit. I, I want to barter more. There's a lot of people out there that want to do that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. It's like growing money, man. So <laughs> we'll see what I can barter for next year. That's, good. That's how awesome. Your, how did you get your turkey? How many cans of tomato sauce? Did Actually, you so hey, so th this is how it worked out. I gave the uh, the person I was bartering with the the. Uh, uh, the option, you know, I, I would buy back the jar for like 50 cents or something like that. I guess I, I was really being an entrepreneur, even even with the jars. I paid like a dollar ten for them, and I said, all right, well, well, maybe not a very good entrepreneur. I was only going to pay 50 cents to get them back. But anyway, so yeah. I said, you know, uh, I'll charge you four bucks a jar if you keep the jar. And he said, yeah, I want to just keep keep the jar. So I gave him 12 quarts uh, of wow. sauce, and I gave him four beautiful red peppers. I mean. Like you can't find anywhere else. Just these beautiful, huge, sweet red peppers, and um, so and and he was selling the turkey for three dollars a pound. This was an organic turkey, um, and that's typical for a, or, organic turkey at three dollars a pound. And oh, it was a twenty-two yeah. pound turkey. So, so for 12, uh, 12 quarts of sauce and uh, four red peppers, it's a deal. I'm still eating eggs right now. I also I can't, I can't remember what it was. I maybe gave sixteen. 16 uh, quarts of sauce for like, I don't know, 30 dozen eggs or wow. something like that. So, and we eat a lot of eggs. So That's awesome. All, all organic, and it, it's just great. Yeah. Right. yeah, that's great. That's one thing I want to do more of is um, canning and preserving. So I just yeah. barely dabbled my it. toes in canning. So you're going to be jazzed up. I'm going to have to plant yeah. lots of tomatoes. and yeah. it, Then so. you'll know what to do with those uh, cucumbers, Adam, right? Pickles. Yeah, well, that was the thing I grew. That was one of my gardening failures was I grew um, just too many slicing cucumbers, and I really didn't have any pickling cucumbers. So I had all these yeah, cucumbers. Yeah, and, you don't want to pickle the slicers. No. Yeah, <laughs> I, like, I couldn't give them away. If I, the, yeah. the neighbors were looking at mm -hmm. me, like, at first they wanted some, but then when I came by, they were, you know, like maybe I was – kind of it was right. getting a little nervous I think with this. I, don't like, know. I don't know I don't know about you all but when you look back on you know when you say the failures in the garden if you really look at it I don't think it really was a failure because you grew it and you knew what you did wrong kind of and then you'll just try again and make it success right you're all yeah, absolutely Listen. Yeah, when we when we say yeah failures we're just really thinking uh, <laughs> learning learning possibilities <laughs> learning. Here. learning yeah yeah so I just want to recap again so people know they can follow Kathy at the Washington and then of, of course Linda at gardenbetty.com and then Scott at gotta grow it right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well it has been so fun having you three on it's uh, yeah we've been following you on social media and you know following your blogs and everything so really neat to get to meet you on a hangout so yeah. um, all good. Well, thank you for thank having you. us. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank Be well. You. Happy New Year. Yeah. Thank right. you. Yes, Hopefully Happy New Year, awesome. everyone. <laughs> okay. And then mm -hmm. um, we're really excited, of course, follow Adam, right, at adamcartel.com. And um, I'm excited about the New Year. How about you, Adam? We have a lot planned for 2015 in the garden world. Yeah, I mean, we've gotten, this is our, I think if I got it right, our 11th uh, <laughs> Eleven. gar garden chatter <laughs> hangout, and I, I yeah. was a little bit ahead of myself on the 10th one, but anyway, so okay. we've got some under our belt, and we're really excited about um, getting some great gardeners and garden bloggers and experts lined up, and uh, yeah. it's just so fun to connect and be able to share information through this format, so yeah, it's going to be a great year. Good. Thanks, Good. guys. Yeah, well, thank, thank you. you. And have a happy new year. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> See you, bye.